Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. Dr. Greiner introduced us to a new type of loop, the while loop, in his programming tip section this week. And so I wanted to demonstrate for you the difference between for and while loops so you'll better understand when it's appropriate to use each one. For and while loops are two types of programming constructs that enable us to perform an action or series of actions over and over and over. Now one of the key differences is that a for loop iterates through the items in a list or the characters in a string and performs that loop code, its action, once for every one of those items. And since a list or string has a finite length, we know before the for loop even runs how many times it's going to run based on the length of that list. With a while loop, on the other hand, we don't know how long the loop's going to run. That loop is just continuously checking for a certain condition to occur and uses that to determine whether or not it should execute its loop code one more time. So to demonstrate these two types of loops, I'm going to perform an operation that I'm very familiar with. You see, I'm in the military, and something I've gotten to do a lot of in training is push-ups. If the drill instructor yells at me to drop down and give him 20 push-ups, you can relate that to a for loop. I know exactly how many push-ups I'm going to do before I begin, which is one push-up for every number between 1 and 20, and I'm going to continue doing push-ups until I hit 20. So I'll count aloud as I complete each operation. Down, up, one. Down, up, two. Down, up, three. And I'll continue doing this until I hit that target of 20. <laughs> we'll pretend that was 19. Down, up, 20. And as a for loop, once I hit 20, I'm going to stop doing push-ups. I will never do more than those 20 push-ups, because you're not getting any free push-ups out of me. So let's look at that in code. In this program, I use a for loop to iterate over a list and perform my 20 push-ups. And you can see here I've created my list by using the range function, so it'll be a list of 20 items being those numbers 1 through 20. The for loop will iterate through this list, and for each item in the list, it'll execute the loop code once. And in doing so, it'll take that item from the list and assign it to my count variable. So the first time this loop iterates, it'll print down up, and the first item in my list is 1, so I'll shout out 1. The second time, it'll print down up, and the next item in my list is two, so I'll shout out two, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and run this code. And you can see that as expected, I perform all 20 of my push-ups. A thing I wanna point out here is that no matter how many times I run this program, I always perform exactly 20 push-ups. Unless I was to do something like insert a break statement inside of my for loop, it'll never run less times than the number of items in my list and more importantly, it'll never execute the loop code more times than the number of items in my list. So since we always know that this loop will execute for exactly 20 times, I could actually rewrite this program to not use the for loop at all. To do that, I would simply copy these four lines from out of the loop code and explicitly repeat them 20 times and just make modifications to this count variable each time. So let me show you an example of that. Here I've created an unrolled version of that for loop we just looked at, where I've taken those four lines of code from inside the loop, and I've repeated them 20 times. And every time, instead of using that count variable, you can see I just reference my range list, and the first time I index out the zeroth item, the next time the first item, and so on, all the way down to the 19th, which is the last item in that list. And so you can see, if I run this code, it performs exactly the same, or I should say it gives exactly the same output as my for loop. But clearly writing out, you know, 40 lines of code is not optimal. With a while loop, rather than specifying how many push-ups I'm going to do before I begin, I'm just going to start pushing and continue pushing until that certain condition is met and I can finally stop. So you can relate this to when the drill instructor tells me to do push-ups until he gets tired. So in that case, I go to the push-up position, I check to see if he's tired yet. Nope, didn't think so. So I do my push-up. Now that I've completed one iteration, I'll check again to see if he's tired now. Nope, still not tired. So I gotta do another push-up. And I'll continue this process on and on until the condition is finally met that the drill instructor's tired and I can stop. <sighs> One thing to point out is that I'm only checking on the condition of the drill instructor at the top of my push-up. I'm not checking during the middle of the push-up operation. So if I was in the down position at the moment that the instructor got tired, I would have to complete that push-up before I can make the check to determine that he's tired 
and I can quit pushing. So let's look at that in some code. In this program, I'm going to do push-ups until Sarge gets tired. So you can see here I've defined two variables. I have a Boolean to show whether or not Sarge is awake. And if it's set to true, that will represent that he is indeed awake. And I also have a count variable down here to keep track of how many push-ups I've completed. So the next part of my code is my while loop. And when this while loop executes, it's going to start by checking the condition of my variable is Sarge awake. And if that value is to true, so Sarge is awake, then I'll perform a push-up. So I'll just print down up. I'll increment my counter because I've completed a push-up and I'll shout out that count. And then down here, you can see I'll randomly check to see whether or not Sarge falls asleep. So in this code, I've uh, represented that by choosing a random number between 0 and 99 and checking to see if that equals 0. So I have a 1 in 100 chance of Sarge falling asleep, so pretty bad odds. Uh, and if that happens, I'll set Sarge is awake to false. So after all of this code runs, the loop will iterate again. It'll check the condition of the Sarge is awake variable. Uh, if that's true still, it'll keep on evaluating and evaluating until finally, when it loops around and checks and it sees that Sarge has fallen asleep, then it'll exit out of the while loop and my code will finish. So if I run this program, you can see this time Sarge was uh, feeling fairly energetic and so he kept watching me for uh, 82 push-ups. Not very lucky on my part. Ah, but here, running it a second time, Sarge got tired early. I didn't even have to do that full 20 push-ups. I got to stop at 14. So the thing to point out here is that the while loop will run for a different number of push-ups each time. We don't know ahead of time how long Sarge is going to stay awake. That's the term randomly while the while loop is already uh, in execution. So something important I want to point out here is that the while loop checks this condition before it even runs a first time. So it's even possible for this while loop to never even execute the code inside. I might get away with not performing a single push-up, and that would occur if I showed up for training and Sarge happened to be asleep. In this case, the first time the while loop runs, Sarge is awake, will evaluate to false, and the loop code will never even run. So that's my lucky day. I can run off and find something else to do. But we all know that never actually happens, so we'll wake Sarge back up for the beginning. So something else I want to point out here is that in the middle of my loop code, if the status of Sarge is awake changes, that's not going to be detected immediately. So let's say Sarge falls asleep while I'm in the down position on my push-up. And uh, something that would make him fall asleep would be if he drank a glass of warm milk. So Sarge drank the glass of warm milk, got sleepy, and fell asleep while I was down. Well, my while loop is not evaluating the value of Sarge is awake the entire time it's executing. It's only evaluating that up here which it does between each iteration through the loop. So when I'm inside the loop, even if Sarge falls asleep, I'll still have to continue and complete the rest of this loop's execution before it'll see that Sarge had fallen asleep. So you can see here, I'll have to complete that first push-up before I can run off and do something else. And the reason I bring this up is, well, what happens if Sarge wakes back up inside of my loop? So let's say right here, Sarge wakes back up because he drank a Red Bull. And so now, even though Sarge is a, uh, falls asleep for a period of time inside of my loop, he's awake as the loop continues executing, and therefore my loop will never actually see that he had fallen asleep here. And as you can see, this brings us back to that same behavior we saw before, where every time I run it, we're just dependent on this random uh, variable here determining when Sarge will fall asleep. There's one last thing about while loops that I want to demonstrate for you, and that's the ability to use a while loop to act similar to a for loop. So here I have uh, that drop down and give me 20 program that we looked at earlier, but this time I'm going to use a while loop instead of a for loop to execute it. So to do that, I've created a count variable which I initialized to zero, and then in my while loop, I'm checking on the condition of whether or not count is less than 20. You can see that in each loop iteration, I'm going to perform uh, my push-up by printing out down up. I'm going to index into that range list of the numbers 1 through 20 using that count variable to shout out the number of push-ups I'm on, then increment my count variable, and that uh, loop will continue repeating over and over and over until count is equal to or greater than 20, so this uh, condition becomes false. And so if I run this code, you can see sure enough as expected,
count is being incremented every time. I'm indexing the next number out of my range list. And so I perform my 20 push-ups exactly as I did with that for loop. And just as with the for loop, I can run this code over and over and I will always perform exactly 20 push-ups. So the reason I bring this up is because we can clearly throttle our while loop using a count variable so that it will run for a deterministic number of times and operate like a for loop. But the inverse is not true. We could not take a for loop and turn it around to operate like a while loop because a for loop can never run more times than the number of list items in its list, but a while loop can run indefinitely. And so using a for loop to try and imitate a while loop means if our loop continues running more than there are items in that list, uh, then we're gonna have a problem. Now that we've seen both types of loops in action, I wanna summarize for you the difference and when to use each one. You should use a for loop when you need to perform the same action on every item in a list or character in a string. Remember that a for loop iterates through every item in the list and executes its loop code once for each of those items. This means that a for loop will run for a predetermined finite number of times depending on the length of the list that's used. A while loop, on the other hand, will just run and run and continue running as it checks a condition to determine whether or not it needs to run one more time. This means that a while loop could run anywhere from zero to an infinite number of times, and that's determined on the fly as the loop is running. So you should use a while loop when you need to perform a repeated operation, but you don't know ahead of time how many iterations will be needed. So I hope these explanations help make it clear to you the difference between for and while loops and give you a better understanding of when to use each one in your code. Happy programming.